Hola, hola, ¿cómo están? Espero que se encuentren excelente. Mi nombre es Andrea de Blue Studies International y hoy vamos a estar con Fernanda Barros de JMC y nos va a estar contando un poquitico más de todos los programas increíbles que tienen, los precios espe especiales que tienen para los estudiantes. Así que nada, invitarlos a que estén súper, súper conectados. Thank you so much, Fernanda, for being here. No hay problema, no hay problema. Thank you, Andrea, for the introduction and thank you everyone who is attending today. Um, I would ju I'm just going to share a little bit about um, JMC, about the, the, the programs that we offer. And then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, so JMC is a school that started in Sydney in 1982. Uh, it started as a very small school just for domestic Australian students. And then with the time, uh, new courses were added. And um, at the moment, we have three different campuses, one in Melbourne, one in Sydney, one in Brisbane. And we have uh, more than 2,200 students ac across these three campuses. Um, the huge majority of our students are um, domestic Australian students. That's a great opportunity for the students so they can actually have this experience of uh, sharing the classroom with locals getting to know the industry and uh, how things work uh, here in Australia a little bit more than they would in a different in a different environment. And that will just help them in the end to get jobs and, and get connections in the industry as well. Uh, most, uh, sorry, one thing that I forgot to mention, majority of our students, uh, international students are from um, Indonesia, Malaysia, and then we have a few students from Korea, Sweden, um, Norway, Uh, and then we have South American, Latin American students as well. So Colombian and Brazilian students after that. So it's a good mix. It's, a, as I said, just great, a great opportunity to merge with uh, students from different places. Um, just talking a little bit about the three cities where we have the campus. I know probably at this time, most of our, our uh, audience is located here in Australia, but maybe still a few people from, from overseas. So I'll just mention the cities anyways. Um, the whole international team is located here in Melbourne. Uh, that's where I am right now as well. Um, we, Melbourne is located more towards the south of the country. A bit colder weather, not so great compared to other uh, other places. But it is. Uh, it was uh, you know I just mentioned that uh, it was one of the most livable cities uh, in the world for seven years in a row. Um, it was also, it's also the, the house of the home of um, major sports events and uh, just cultural events as well. So many concerts and so many things come to Melbourne. Um, so yeah, just an amazing place to be. Uh, we have our Sydney campus as well. Uh, Sydney is probably one of the most well-known cities in Australia. We have big cities and um, beaches and, and nature just close by as well. Um, great opportunity for work and to, to, to create connections as well, a little warmer compared to Melbourne. And we finally have Brisbane. Uh, Brisbane is in, located in the northeast of uh, the country. So it is a lot warmer during the whole year. So if that's what you're looking for, then that's the place to be. Um, all the three campuses are located in very cultural and very uh, traditional areas for events and for uh, cultural activities as well. So um, it's also a good, uh, a good chance for the students just to get, observe that environment a little bit more. And uh, plus the campuses are very close to the, cent the city center, so the CBGs. So it's walking distance or just a short uh, public transport ride. Uh, you can see some of the pictures from our campus over there. So uh, we do have uh, computer labs with all the equipment and the software as the students will need to use during the course. So um, students don't need to buy any license uh, to do their activities and projects, unless of course they want to, but uh, we do have that on campus and we offer that to the students. Um, the picture of the studio where people are playing over there in the top, uh, It's one of our recording studios. So students um, have the opportunity, especially music students, uh, they have opportunity to use that. Uh, that is connected to uh, one of the mixing tables from um, our audio engineering course. So students can actually record that as well. And sometimes we do 
uh, a little bit of a mix with also, uh, also the students from uh, film and television, so they can do video clips and things like that. So lots of uh, interaction between the departments, which is always a good idea and always interesting for the students. Uh, the, the building that you see in the bottom is our Sydney campus. It's, it is huge <laughs> and we have lots of free areas for the students as well to enjoy and to study. Um, the top uh, left picture is one of the mixing tables that I mentioned before. This is actually the one that students, the audio students really want to get to because that's the, the most uh, technology advanced that we have and probably pro possibly one of the most technology advanced in the industry. Um, and we do you have a, a few other pictures there from our film and television, the studio and uh, our animation and design um, department as well. Just talking a little bit about um, the programs that we offer. So we have uh, bachelors and uh, diplomas in all these colorful areas you can see over there. Uh, so the diploma is the, the two first trimesters of the bachelor. So students, if the students want to do a shorter course, about eight or nine months duration, that's probably a best option. But for those students who want to, to do a longer course, we have the bachelor, the full degree. Um, so we have the audio engineering sound production course. So that's, as I mentioned before, this is all about recording sound, especially being on studio, uh, making sure the music or whatever they are recording sound great and how to mix sounds as well and, and these kind of things. Um, we have contemporary music performance. So this course is for those students who really want to be uh, recording artists. They want to be on stage. They want to record their music. Um, so that's um, a very complete course. Students choose um, what kind of instrument they're going to focus their studies on. So if they are singers, so their instrument is the voice, if they play a guitar or a piano or anything else, um, that's probably the instrument they are going to focus their studies on. But during the course, they also have the opportunity to improve their skills, the skills that are not super strong. So let's say if I, if I play an instrument, but I'm not a great singer, um, I have the opportunity to develop my singing skills as well. It's just um, all about making sure the students are a more complete uh, singer or performer uh, in the end of the, the course. Um, we do have a course for those who not necessarily want to be on stage, but uh, they, they might be if they want to, if they are singers or, or uh, musicians, but they want to improve their songwriting skills. Or for those who purely just want to write songs, we have the songwriting course as well. Uh, we do have an entertainment uh, business management course. So that's all about how to manage other people's careers and uh, how to be behind the scenes, organizing events, festivals, and this kind of stuff. We have a few courses that are more towards design. So we have animation, game design, and digital design. And we finally have the film and television course. So if you are probably thinking about doing cinema, film and television, that will be the closest course that you can, that you can, you can get out of those. Uh, we also have a certificate three in screen media and a master of creative industries. I'll mention a little bit about them in a minute. Um, so for the diplomas and for the bachelors, so we have three takes per year, February, June, and September. Um, and the students, for the bachelor, the students can choose between two different options. So they can do a two-year program or a three-year program. The content of the program itself is exactly the same. So they are going to learn the same units and the same content, doesn't matter which duration they choose. The main difference is for the two-year program, students only have short breaks in between uh, the terms or the trimesters. So they only have like two, three weeks between the trimesters, then they start over. For the three-year program, uh, students have the opportunity to actually uh, have a very long break after trimester two. So they study for two trimesters, they have about four or five months of breaks, and then they start with the third one, and then uh, three and four, and then another big break. That is a great opportunity for the students, especially international students, because uh, we rely on uh, work and we, we want to travel around as well. So during this time, so students have a valid visa, they can 
work full time in Australia or they can travel abroad if they want to. So just increase the opportunity uh, to enjoy Australia a little bit more or to get some extra money <laughs> to help. Um, we also have many international connections. So um, we usually uh, have this small, uh, the short term programs about two, one or two weeks where we send the students to different countries uh, to study and to actually do some uh, short courses with our partners. So we have uh, Fontys University uh, and students can do an exchange program there in the Netherlands. Um, for the film and television students, we have a film tour in Hollywood, uh, which is awesome. Um, in Japan, we have GKCon Animation and J-Pop Tour. So it's usually about 10 days or two weeks, the students go there and they just get that extra experience. And for songwriters, we have the, the Harling International Songwriters Camp that happens in Amsterdam. Um, so it, it is, this kind of programs, not everybody will join and there is an extra cost for that. Uh, but of course, if the students can do it, it's, a, it's just an amazing opportunity. It's, it's, you learn so much in, in, in that period of time, short period of time, that is just unbelievable. And of course, this just adds to your career and to your resume in the end. Uh, in terms of student support, so um, JMC offers academic support for all the students. Uh, so we can help with academic writing, critical thinking, uh, resources. So any questions or any uh, doubts the students might have and how to write assessments in a better way. Because I, I know, especially in the beginning, it can be very tricky. Uh, we don't know exactly how to put our ideas on paper. And we do have to do that all the time, especially for the diplomas and bachelors. You know, you were, you were doing... Uh, a course that it will teach you everything about um, the practical side of things, but it will also help you to become a better professional. It's not only about the practical, it will help you to um, think critically and actually be a more complete professional. So um, yeah, the academic support is there to help. Uh, we also have in each one of the campus a counselor that helps the students if they are feeling a bit blue, a bit homesick sometimes, or depressed or uh, anxious about, about you know, their studies or their life in general. So these counselors are there just to uh, really help the students. So students can book a time and go and see them. Uh, also since, um, since the beginning of COVID in March or April this year, we partner with another company that provides 24 seven counseling online as well. So if students are in the middle of the night at home and they cannot sleep because they feel anxious or they're sad or something like that, there is someone there that can talk to them. Um, the students have the opportunity to repeat the assessments in the first trimester as well. And we have the peer mentoring program just to guide the students during the whole course. Um, another advantage is that students have the opportunity to do internships. You can see some of the, their, uh, our interns' um, stories over there. So students, sometimes they have already a job and they can use that job as an internship in some of the, their trimesters. Um, sometimes we have these positions being advertised, you know, people contacting JMC and Students can see the positions in the notice board. They can just apply directly to the company. Or sometimes students can be recommended uh, by the head of the department to a specific role. Of course, um, these recommendations, they come especially for those students who really work hard and they, they really, um, you know, try their best. Um, so, yeah, that's just a, an extra thing that the students can do that helps their, that help their career, careers as well. Um, I'll just mention a few um, successful stories from our former students as well. So um, you can see some of them there. I won't go into too much details, but I'll just mention a few um, just so you can have an idea of what can be done. Um, so for animation television, we have Scott. Uh, Scott is at the moment the creative director and head of UX design for Rolling Stone magazine, but he was previously working for um, HBO as an art director and he was nominated for an Emmy Award for his work in Game of Thrones, which is awesome. <laughs> um, for animation in games, we have many stories of students um, 
who did the course here, went back to their countries and opened their own companies, are working as anim animators uh, in their countries, home countries. And uh, we have people who are still in Australia and doing other things in Australia, uh, working as well. So we have, for example, Sahan, uh, he's a developer. He did uh, the, he, he does the electronic art games for companies behind Battlefield and FIFA World Cup. We have Nuru, uh, she's from Indonesia and uh, she is uh, at the moment working for Bali, uh, a Bali studio in animation as well. There are some games you can see there, some of the games our students created and you can download that on the, inter on the internet or just uh, on, uh, on your phone and, and play them if you want to. Um, for audio stories, uh, same thing, similar thing to animation. We have a few people like Jason who uh, finished the course, went back to his home country, which is Malaysia, and he opened his own uh, audio uh, company. Um, and we have, for example, people like Daniel who work for The Voice, some Hollywood films as well. Um, and one interesting one is Peter, the, the last guy on the right. He finished the course and after learning how the sound travels and how to make sound sound better, um, uh, he decided to work for the Swiss hearing aid company. So he's doing those, you know, uh, kind of machines and, and products that people who have low um, hearing can uh, use to just improve that. So that's amazing. So just just a, a different, uh, a different, a different area he can, he could find a job and, and work on. Um, we have Aldo, he is an audio director in Canada and he does the audio for games like Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed and some others as well. For film and television, we have Charles who uh, he's the head of creative for Soho and Showcase and he did the sports broadcast uh, for uh, London Olympic Games and Brazil FIFA World Cup for Foxtel. Um, in music, we have Earth Patravi. So Earth, it was, she was already a recorded artist in uh, Thailand. And she came to Australia without saying who she was and what, what she, she was doing in Thailand, um, just because she wanted to be a better songwriter. So she came and she started her course. Everybody noticed how good she was. And then they found out her little secret. Um, during her time in Melbourne, she wrote and recorded Starry Night, which is one of her most um, successful songs. She's back to Thailand right now, and she's the face of Apple Music right there. A uh, few other stories. We have Jenny, who signed with uh, Universal. We have Jazz, Jazz and Matt, who signed with Sony Music and are very, very uh, well-known in Sydney. Uh, and some other international students like Aniket. Uh, he came with part, half of his band from India and now he's, he's doing tours in India and in different other, other, other different places. Uh, for entertainment business management, we have Enrietta. So that's a successful story, not only for the course, but also for internships. Enrietta, um, she started doing an internship when she was studying with us for uh, digital music. And when, when she finished the course, she was invited to open the brand, their branch in Stockholm. So she went to Stockholm to um, open Dito Music over there, and she's still the manager there. A few other stories. We have Jason, for example, the third guy over there. He works for the talent management agency from Madonna. It's just nothing, nothing much. Um, <laughs> Well, for entry requirements for all the undergraduate co courses, the diploma and the bachelor's, the students need to be at least 18 years old to join. They have to, to have the completion of high school certificate, which is equivalent to year 12 in Australia. Um, their English proficiency needs to be IELTS 6.0 or equivalent. If students don't have that level, uh, but one still want to join, they can do a pathway. We have, we do have a, a list of schools students can do a pathway with, so they can study English in different uh, schools and then come and join our course after that. Um, every single one of the students, um, they go through an interview uh, with our admissions team. Don't, don't worry too much. It's not that scary. <laughs> it's just to get to know you guys a little bit more and get to know um, if, that course that you are choosing is actually the one that you are looking for. 
And uh, there are some courses, they have some specific requirements as well, which are uh, for music performance, there is an audition live or via, via video. So if students are in Australia, depending on where they are, <laughs> they can do a live audition. So they can come to one of our campus and perform live, uh, play an instrument or sing. Um, otherwise, they can just upload a, a few videos of themselves singing or playing on um, YouTube and send us a link. For songwriting, they can do both an audition or uh, submit a portfolio with some of the lyrics and some of their work um, they're, they're working on um, so we can have a look. And for animation, games, and digital design, we just want to see a portfolio. Basically, we want to see the creative mind behind the students. Um, so we just want to see at what point the students are so we can guide them further. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a Master of Creative Industries. So with this course, it's a two-year program, and it is for those students who are already involved in the industry. So during the course, this course, we are not going to teach the students basic um, technical skills. So we're not going to teach, for example, uh, someone who wants to focus their study in film and television how to operate a camera. We expect the students to know that already uh, in the masters, but um, we are going to get an idea uh, from the student and develop a whole um, project during those two years. So in the beginning of the, the studies, in the beginning of the two years, um, students from different uh, areas will be, sit will be sitting together in the same classroom. But as the course advance advances, students will be split and they're going to have mentors focus, uh, helping them focus in their own personal project. So for example, if a student is a musician, the project can be, for example, um, uh, just doing a whole new album or recording something new. If the, the person is an entertainment business management, the program can be, uh, the, the course can be focusing on organizing a festival or concert. Um, if it is uh, a game designer, probably a, they're going to develop a game and things like that. So there will be individual one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions so students can actually be guided on that process. Uh, for the master's, students need to have uh, completed the, the bachelor degree in a relevant field. So let's say, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, someone who wants to focus in film and television, they, they need to have some previous studies in that area, or maybe they are just an accountant who plays a guitar and they want to do the bachelor. As long as they can show us, um, pro uh, just prove the, the, this creative side and, and what they have been doing, we can still accept the students. Uh, the English language proficiency for that one is IOT 6.5, no band below six, and they, go, they will go through interviews as well. Um, we do have a certificate three in screen media as well. This is a shorter course, it's only a 16 week program. Uh, this is basically for those students who um, want to join creative industries, but they are not quite sure what they, are, what they want to do. Uh, so if they don't have any previous experience, for example, they, they might be able to join as long as they uh, can show some creative ability. Uh, but yeah, and also um, if the students want to join a bachelor or diploma, but they haven't completed the year 12, the equivalent to year 12 in Australia, they do have only year 11 that also works as a pathway so they can do certificate three and then go to uh, undergrad courses. Regarding fees, so for all new students, we charge a $150 fee. Uh, for the certificate three by itself, it's only $2,750 for the whole 16 weeks. Uh, oh, and I forgot to say, uh, for the certificate three, the intakes are in April and September next year. Um, we have the diploma and the bachelor, they have the same price per trimester, which is 11,300 for, uh, for next year, for 2021. But if a student wants to join the course in um, February, which is the next available intake for, for those courses, uh, they are going to pay only $9,000 instead of 11,300 for trimester one and two. So after trimester three, they, they go back to normal price, but uh, there is a reduction, saves a bit of money in the beginning. 
Um, and the Master of Creative Industries, the next intake is in March. So we have March and August from, for the Masters. The price is usually at uh, $11,000 per semester. But again, if the students join in March, they will uh, pay $9,350. Uh, so there is a fee reduction as well uh, for the initial two semesters. Um, for those students who want to do um, a very practical course and they, they are looking for something a little bit different, we do have uh, under the same umbrella as JMC, we have a different school, but kind of same thing, but different. We are under the same umbrella, but different, uh, different companies. Um, so we have the Academy of Film, Theater and Television that is located only in Sydney. So with them, we have two different courses. The diploma that is one year long and the advanced diploma, which is one year for the diploma and another extra year for the advanced diploma. Uh, and the students can choose major their majors in film, acting and live production. Um, the courses with AFTT are extremely practical. We do have an industry partnership with uh, Belvoir Street Theatre in Sydney. So students do lots of uh, presentations and assessments over there. Uh, and the students have the opportunity to actually start working from the beginning. So there's heaps of opportunities for the students to do extras uh, with studios and, and um, different companies in Sydney. So that, that is advertised um, in the school and the students can just apply and join. Um, the English uh, language entry for this one is uh, IELTS 5.5. So it's a little bit lower. And for those students who want to do um, a bachelor later on, they can film, finish the film major, the, the advanced diploma in film, and they can go uh, get a pathway to go to JMC and finish the, the Bachelor of Film and Television with JMC. So in that case, the student only needs to do three trimesters with JMC later on. Uh, for AFTT, the price per semester is 8,750. So it's two semesters for the diploma and four semesters for the advanced diploma. I think that's it. Do we have any questions? I think we do. Fernanda, I love it. I think you have shared like a lot of information. I love the stories, the successful stories. It's mm. really amazing. It shows you that when you want, you can. I true. love it. That's we true. Have, we have two different questions. First mm -hmm. one, I would like to know if you have a master's degree in music in any instrument or in conducting, and if you have a scholarship to study music. Uh, the only master that we have is only focused in the creative, like it's a general master of creative industries. But as I said, we are going to focus on the studies where the students want to, to, to study. So if, if it's a musician, for example, so we are going to focus that in music. So probably to develop a, um, an album or a few few songs uh, throughout the course, but we don't have anything uh, in conducting, specifically for, for conducting, no. Awesome. And the second one is, if they want to move from one location to another one, they can? Easy, easy. We have we run the same, exactly the same programs uh, in three different campuses. So students can start in Melbourne, uh, do one year in Melbourne, one year in Sydney, one year in Brisbane. There's no issue at all. We can organize that. Awesome. So if they want to be in the cold weather six months here in Melbourne and after yes. that go to Brisbane, amazing. I love it. Easy. Yeah, we can definitely organize that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fernanda, for your time and all the information that you have given us. Um, no I don't know if we have, no, we don't have more questions. Uh, thank you so much, Fernanda, y me gustaría invitar a los que nos están escuchando, si tienen más preguntas, a que vayan a la feria, vayan al stand, y si tienen preguntas como muy individuales, hablen con Fernanda para revisar su caso. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye. Bye.